does, lay aside, blank. And then I'm going to allow you later on after the sermon to go in there and fill that out. For some it may take a few moments. For some it may take a day. It may take a while. But I can assure you that will not remain blank after God's message today. This morning I like to speak briefly about our Christian race. God has placed us in a race. This is a race for us to run. And certainly it's a tedious journey. Sometimes we're faced with ups and downs and trials and tribulations. Some days we don't know what to expect from moment to moment, day to day, but we're quickly reminded, as you heard me say many times before, the Word of God say, Think it not strange concerning these trials which are to try you. And sometimes in life God allows us to go through the test because we know that every test that we go through, two things should make us wiser and also should draw us closer to God. It says, look unto the hills from whence cometh your help. We run in a hard time. Look unto the hills. We run in difficult time. Look unto the hills, for it's a sure thing. All our help cometh from the Lord. So think it not strange concerning the pandemic. Think it not concerned concerning the riot. Think it's not strange concerning the presidential vote. Think it not strange concerning the things that's going on in your world. Think it not strange concerning the things that are going on in the United States as well and other countries. They are here to try somebody, whether it be me, you, or someone, somewhere, somebody is being put through the test. But the Word of God is telling us we might, we might, no matter what we go through in life, we are to look unto the hills from whence cometh our help. For all our help cometh from the Lord. This morning we'll talk about laying aside, let us lay aside blank. And before I move forward, I want you to make sure you catch the first two words. Let us. Let us. That means everybody on the sound of my voice. So many times people leave church and they say, well, the pastor really told him. Or the pastor really preached to him. The pastor really preached to her. Well, the pastor's preaching to himself. He's preaching to everyone on the sound of my voice. Let us lay aside. Let us lay aside. This morning God uh, are talking about his, uh, the Christian race. Three things God is want to point out today. The first thing that I want you to know, God wants you to stay in the race. No matter what happened, no matter what you face with, no matter what you hear, no matter what's going on in the world, you need to remember these words. God is counting on you to stay in the race. We all know somebody that has started out in the race. Someone that uh, have given up in the race. Someone that started out well, whether they was on the Ursha board, in the choir, whether they were just sitting on a pew, whether they were giving you the amen, even on the pulpit, on the deacon board. We all know someone that started out strong only to give up. We have to understand that God is counting on us to stay in the race. We cannot go weary, grow weary in well-doing. Next thing God wants us to do, God wants and want and expect us to run the race. You can't run the race being idle. You can't run the race just sitting and waiting for things to happen. We can't run the race, as we heard last week, being a busybody. God is counting on you to run the race regardless of how you feel. Run the race regardless of what is going on in the world. Run the race regardless of what, what he say or she say or, or your neighbors doing. God is counting on you counting on me to run this race. God, as I said earlier, yes, obstacles are going to rise, storms going to rise, trials and tribulation will come, and mountains will even arise in your life. But in spite of everything, God is counting on you to run this Christian race. We come too far now to turn around. We come too far to give up. We have come so far now that we should have a willing and made up mind saying, Lord, I want to keep running because I want to see meet you at the end. The third thing God want and expect us to do, God want us to finish the race. God want us to finish the race. Sometimes a lot of people say, well, you know what, I'm going to retire now. I've been doing this here for 20 years. I'm going to move back and let the younger group go through. I'm going to move aside and let this deacon and let this preacher. We have to understand each person are running their own race. And you're going to hear me say this early again. God expect you to finish the race. God never start what he can't finish. You know, a lot of times we were growing up, people used to say, don't start anything you can't finish. Our God finished everything he started, even in you. No good works are going unnoticed by the Lord. If you have a made-up mind and you're willing and you step out on faith, 
God will see you through. Even sometime in a job or sometime in a, in a new adventure, somebody said, well, I don't know. I, I'm going to give it a try. I like to start. And before you know it, they've mastered it. Because with God on our side, everything is possible. God is telling us today that we need to continue to press towards the mark, seeking the finish line in our Christian race. For the word says that those that endure to the end are the ones that shall be saved. As we run this race, verse 1 reminds us that we are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, meaning that people are watching you. We need to know, listen, that people, the witnesses, they're watching you. And you know if you ever uh, had an accident or if you had to ever give a report, uh, witnesses always seem to come up with different accounts, don't they? They can all be standing in one spot and they all can give, give three or four different events. So today, church, we need to know that we are being watched. God's people are being watched. They're watching you to see what you do. People are watching you to see where you go. Witnesses are watching you to see how you live. This is why the Word tells us to be an example to those which are lost. And I don't want you to fool yourself. And don't be misled into thinking or believing that those witnesses are watching you to help you. I don't want you to be misled believing you believing and thinking that those witnesses are watching to lift you up or to build you up. But many are watching to bring you down. Many of those witnesses are watching to start a rumor about how you are living your life. This is why the Bible tells us in St. Matthew chapter 5, 16 through 18, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your what? Your good works that they may see your good works and begin to glorify your Lord and, and Father which is in heaven. Church, and know the great cloud of witnesses, they're growing every day. They're growing all the time. But in spite of all the witnesses we are compassed about around, uh, whether those witnesses just like a football game, regardless how many witnesses are in, the, how many fans in the stand, whether they're standing or whether they're sitting, God is still counting, those players, those, the teams are still counting, uh, coach is still counting on you to play the game. The coach is still counting on each man to do their part. Regardless, 50,000, 20,000, a quarter of the uh, stadium is filled, that coach is still counting on you to do your part. Likewise, God say to us today, regardless how many witnesses are watching you today, regardless who's out following you, God is still counting on you to stay in the race. God, in spite of the witness, God is not only counting on you to stay in the race, but he's counting on you to run the race. Not only stay in the race and run the race, but God is counting on you to finish the race. As God continued to hold his promise, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He is daily showing us he will continue to help us on our Christian journey. And this is where we get to our text today. This is where we come to our text today because sermon texts say to us, let us lay aside. When God gave me this message this morning, I prepared to finish the topic. Let us lay aside every way. Let us lay aside this. Let us say, but he stopped me and let us lay aside. I was thinking he was going to let me say lay aside what or lay aside something. Then he quickly reminded me to leave it blank. Because he said, every child of mine know what they need to lay aside. Every child of mine know what they need to lay aside. And not only what, but they know that every child of mine know whom they need to lay aside. This morning, we we're reminded that many of God's children are wanting to run the Christian race. Many of God's people want to stay in the race. Many of God's people want to get back in the race. Many of God's people have a mindset to finish the race, but somewhere in their lives, they have allowed Satan to put the weights and anchors in their life. Somewhere they have allowed Satan to put the burdens in their life. And not only put them in their lives, but each thing that Satan has loaded on them has caused them to slow down. You know, weights will cause you to slow down. And not only cause them to slow down, but it's been so many weights he's caused God's children to give up. Not only give up, but he simply have caused a lot of God's people to get out of the race. Today, God is willing to help you, regardless who you are, regardless how heavy the load may be, regardless who's involved. God is ready to help you get back 
in the race again. That's good news, church. God right now is ready to lift the burdens. God right now is ready to lighten your load so you can get back in the race again. If you don't think it matters about having a, the weights heavy on you, I want, and God knows I, I'm just using this example, I want you to, whatever weight you may be, or whether it be 100, or whether it be 80, I want you to go and find somebody that weighs 100 plus more than you, and then invite them for a race. And you will find out that 100 plus man is probably going to meet, beat you every time to the finish line versus that 300 pound man because the weights in life, the weights on the body, it wears us down. It slows us down. The Bible states in St. Matthew 11 verse 28, we, are, we all are burdened and we're heavy loaded. We've been there at one time. If you're not, just keep on living. We have the devil is steady putting things that, in our lives. If you're not only in your life, you're trying to put it in your back trying to put it in your mind, trying to put it in your heart. He's wanting you heavy loaded. But in St. Matthew verse 11, the Bible states that you can hear Jesus calling you today. And God, these words say, come unto me. And they say, come unto me, I just thought, of, come here. Hey, come here, brother. Come here, sis. Come here, my child. Come here, uh, over here. Come over here, let me tell you something. And he says, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I want you to know today, church, that God can and God will help you lighten your load. Because He knows the heavier the load, the less you're able to do. He knows the heavier the load, the shorter distance you can go. Today, God is reminding us that He can help us lighten our load. This is great news because so many of God's people are living their lives overloaded. Overloaded with burdens, overloaded with problems, overloaded with, overloaded with things that in their life, overloaded in somebody else's life. And you know anything overloaded can break at any time, including you. Anything overloaded can break at any time, including you. The more weight that is applied can cause a breakdown at any time, including you and me. So today, church, God gives us a formula. To help us endure every overload we will encounter in life. Isn't that good news? See, God knows we serve an all-wise God. We serve an all-knowing God. Today, church, God gives us a formula to help us endure every overload we will encounter in our life. Let us go through it today, church, as I move forward in God's word today. It begins with, verse, with these words, let us. Let us mean he's speaking to you and me. He's speaking to all his children. A lot of times God's people, we want to separate the, the saints and the sinner. But God said, I come to Jesus and his son that he may save all. He comes seeking all that they will return turn from their wicked ways. He comes for all to repent, to get back into the knowledge. Let us, let us all, men, boys and girls, men and women, male and female, let us lay aside every weight. Listen to God's word. Let us do what? Let us lay aside. I don't want to keep you long today, but two things I want to talk about here in this first sentence. And the first one, God want me to point out, lay aside. Please know there's a difference between laying aside and laying it down. This past week, I, I like to share my experience. I, I started a diet a couple of weeks ago. And as and, and, and y'all know, uh, I, I'm a, I love to eat. Your pastor loves to eat. I can eat a snack, a big meal, a little meal. I can eat pecans. I can eat just pretty much whatever you bring me. I, I'm really not, uh, don't pick and choose when it comes to eating because I love to eat. But when I decided to take that, to go on that diet, I had to make a choice. I had to, I had to make a choice on to decide on what I was going to lay down and what I was going to lay aside. I had to see if I was able to lay aside all those snacks. Y'all just think about this for a moment. Please give me a moment to think. Cookies, pies, ice cream, cake, uh, sandwiches, hamburgers, chicken, Sonic, uh, Chicken Express, all the... Oh, y'all know I can eat right now, even though I'm on the diet. But I had to make a choice whether I was going to lay it down or lay it aside. I knew I had to lay it aside. Because if I laid it down, I would just put those snacks right down on that table 
And every time my mind thought about it, I would go right back to it. If I put it down, I'll put it right down. I know I'm just going to leave it right here by the bed. I knew that every time I woke up with one eye open, I'd be reaching over, going right back to it. And when I looked up the definition of lay aside, it states to us today, the lay aside means to push away. To lay aside means to move over. Remember the words of God today say, let us lay aside. So lay aside means to push away, move over. And then this word I like right here, the lay aside means to abandon or give up. And this is God's message today. If we want to please God, if we want to live a pleasant life, if we want to see a change in our life, if we want to enjoy the fruits of all labor, we must be willing to lay aside the blanks in our life. And this is where we come to number two, the blanks in our life. God is telling us today, the blanks in our lives is the weight that is wearing us down. The weights that are slowing us down. The weights that are causing us to fall short. The weights that are causing, hindering us in our Christian walk. Let us lay aside. He didn't say not some, not a few, but let us lay aside every weight that is holding me down. But let a man, the Bible says, but let a man examine himself. I can't fill in your blanks. You can't fill in my blanks. Your children can't fill in your blanks. Your spouse can't fill in your blanks. Your parents can't fill in your blanks. But let us lay aside every weight. And then third, I come to again, we talked about last week about one of the devil's greatest tools. I come again today to announce again one of the devil's greatest tools. And it can be found here, it says, lay aside every weight and burdens, lay them down. And then third, the sin which so easily beset us. That is the devil's greatest tool. Make no mistake about it today, church. The devil knows your weakness. The devil knows what tool to use. He knows what he can get us for, to fall on every time. The Bible take to state, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, mm -hmm. but the end thereof mm -hmm. is death. Yeah. And that's talking about sin because sin equals death. Mm -hmm. Regardless who you are, regardless how long we've been in church, regardless how long we've been knowing the Lord, regardless of what or whom we think we may be, the devil knows your weakness. Mm -hmm. And that's why we need Jesus on our side every day. Not only did he know our weakness, we have to know that we can't allow Satan to get us every time. We can't. We just when we say, you think about it. All of us have been here at one point or another. And sometimes we wait till the end of the year. Sometimes we just get a mindset to just say, you know what, I had enough. Then now is the time. And I'm just using this for example, but just when you say we're going to quit doing this, just when you say I'm no longer going to do this anymore, just when you say I'm ready to change my life, give my life over to Christ, I'm ready to start living right, I'm ready to start going back to church, I'm ready to start doing the things that God want me to do. Just when we think we're ready to give up the old life, that devil say, wait a minute, hold them, wait a minute. That's, that's them trying to go back to Jesus. That's them trying to go back to church. That's them trying to leave this alcohol alone. That's them trying to leave that smoking alone. That's them trying to leave that sex alone. That's them trying to leave those drugs alone. So you know what the devil does? He say, hold up. And then he said, I remember that sin that they love. So what he does, he goes back and he, he brings it back to us. He makes it so easy. He brings it back and he not only bring it back, but he lay it out right in front of you. Church, you need to know today that the devil knows the sin which easily beset us. And sometimes he can get, we talk about two birds with one stone. Sometimes he can get us to several people over and over again with the same sin. That's why our sermon today is so potent. That's why our sermon today is so strong. That's why it's so convincing today. Because to do it to the end on this Christian journey, we must be willing to let us, each and every one of us, Lay aside every weight, and then the sin which, which so easily, easily beset us. us. The sin, what is the sin that easily beset us? It's the sin that get us every time. We ask ourselves, I can't believe 
I let the devil do that to me again. I can't believe I let that person do that to me again. I can't believe I'm in the same predicament. I can't believe I'm in the same problem. I can't believe that I'm going in circles. And the reason being because somewhere we allow the devil to use that same sin on us over and over again. To lay aside this morning, church, God is telling us today that we can lay aside that sin which so easily beset us. We can, the devil, today, and let us know that we can run with patience. The Word of God says to us today that we have to slow down. We have to wait up on the Lord. Because the devil is certainly has that tool sitting on the side waiting for you. He's ready to lay down those sin. He's ready to put that sin out there that easily beset you. He's ready to put that sin out there that's got you, you know you're on the right track. You know you're trying to see God for yourself. You know that time is winding down. You know that the time is getting shorter. And you're trying to change your life around. But you need to know today that even though he knows your weakness, you need to know that God said, I'm a stronghold in times like these. All we have to do is get our hand, keep our hand in God's hand, put our hand back in God's hand, and God will and God can get us back on the right track again. God says, and finally, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. We all have our own race to run. You can't run my race, neither can I run your race. I can't get in your lane, neither can you get in my lane. But there's one thing we can both do together. We can run with Jesus. And I've always told the church, as long as we're running with Jesus, as long as we got Jesus on our side, Everything is going to be okay. The word says in verse 2, all we have to do is look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He helped us start the race, and he will help us finish the race. He said, I will never leave you, right? He said, I'll be there. I'm going to bless you going out, and you're coming in from this time forward. He will not only get you to the finish line, but he will get you to the other side. He will go with us the last mile of the way. Let us follow the formula and the procedure that God has set before us, and God will see us to the other side. I pray and trust that you have gotten a thought out of God's message today. I pray that you have been uplifted to lay aside the sin which so easily beset us. Lay aside every weight. You know, we all are burdened down. Things come in our life. We have to learn to quickly give those things unto God. We can't carry them because if the devil sees you try to carry one thing, Oh, I got them. Let me go ahead and put another thing on. Let them go. And before you know it, you're snowed under. You're burdened down. You don't know if you're going or coming. You're ripping and running. You're going here and there. And as I told y'all last week, it's the devil's job to go to and fro. Not our job. He's doing a great job by himself. He don't need our help. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily beset us. And then let us run the Christian race. God will help us to the finish line, and God will get us across the finish line. 